Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Arindam Bagh here, and uh, our topic is today the adventures of Tom Sawyer. In my last class, I have completed till chapter number twenty-eight. Today, we are going to discuss about chapter number twenty-three and thirty. Pardon me for any background noise, because uh, um, right now I am outside, actually outdoor somewhere. I have to. I have some obligation. and i am recording this uh, <laughs> beside the road inside my car so you might find some noises out there uh, please pay attention to my voice only i hope you will understand all the things so what happens here uh, tom hears good news on friday morning so the thatcher family has returned from their family vacation thatcher means becky thatcher you know her, his girlfriend's name already Uh, she is Becky, and uh, she is back. So Tom spends most of the time with Becky, and uh, she talks her mother into the promised picnic for the next day. Invitations are sent out, and everyone gathers the next morning for the chartered ferry boat. So there, Mrs. Thatcher decides, as it is late, Becky should stay with a friend near the ferry landing. Tom talks Becky into joining him. For ice cream at the widow Douglas house, up to the right, and Becky reluctantly agrees. So finally, we can see that uh, the relationship between Becky and uh, Tom has been repaired, and now Becky is uh, ready to spend some quality time with Tom. Now, three miles down river, the ferry boat stops, and everyone plays until someone shouts that it is time to try Mac Douglas Cave. So, what is Mac Douglas Cave? It's a vast uh, cave network. If you visit uh, Andhra Pradesh, I guess there we have in India also we have this kind of caves. Uh, the name of that exact place is Bora Cave. You know, their um, limestones are responsible for that kind of um, caves. It is because of the erosion of the limestones. So here also Mac Douglas Cave. It is not particularly a limestone cave, but uh, it's a, la a vast labyrinth of crooked aisles. Everyone knows some of the cave, and Tom knows as much as anyone did. It was not explored. All the part is not explored. It's like a labyrinth, and it is very difficult sometimes uh, to get out of that part. So some of the people they are familiar with this uh, cave, but not everyone. Tom knows as much as anyone did, but no one alive knows the entire cave. So it is very difficult to, you know, there is no person actually in that area who uh, knows all the um, parts of that cave. It's like network of cave. After much wandering about, the finally group finally leaves the cave to discover that it is almost dark, and the ferry boat is anxious to make the trip home. So you know, visiting places like this takes some time and. Uh, it was getting dark that night huck watches number 2 the door opens number 2 i, I hope you remember that's a tavern at inn it is uh, mentioning about two men brush past him because he doesn't have enough time to give tom so at the signal huck carefully follows those person one of them is obviously that spaniard you know that uh, uh, that injun jo he is in disguise so huck was actually following him He overhears Injun Jo planning revenge some years earlier. Judge Douglas, Widow Douglas, late husband at Injun Jo, horse whipped in public. So, Widow Douglas' husband was a judge who punished um, Injun Jo for his crime. So, Injun Jo was looking for some kind of revenge. So, to get even, Injun Jo plans to slit uh, and nostrils and notch her ears like so. So, he was looking for some kind of revenge on. Mrs. Douglas and Huck somehow managed to overhear these things. Two men seeing a light in the widow's house and thinking that she was company, decide to wait until later in the night. Huck silently creeps away and runs frantically to Wellsman's house, which is close by. He tells what he heard, and Wellsman and his son promise not to tell who told them. They all leave the Shumak bushes with Huck lingering behind. When he hears shot, he waits no longer and runs back to town as quickly as possible. 
As soon as it is daylight, Hark Hark goes back to Wellsman's house. Wellsman is glad to welcome Hark into his house because Hark's courage and because he prevented the widow from being mutilated. So finally, Hark has done some done something. Uh, Hark is a vagrant boy, obviously, but he is very good at his heart, and because of his uh, uh, activity, widow Douglas was saved by Wellsman. So uh, they actually uh, Hark explained to. Mm, sorry, what happened actually? Wellsman and his son uh, be hid behind a spot in Shumak bushes. Or oh, this part has been done. The robbers ran away. That means um, Injinjo and the other partner of Injinjo they left the scenario. And uh, in this way, um, Mrs. Douglas was saved. Okay, very fine. Uh, but uh, they tried to um, pursue Injinjo and his partner, but the main escape capture. Huck explains to the Wilsman how he had seen the robbers and how he followed him, followed them about, and the, how he overheard about mutilating Widow Douglas' face, etc. So under pressure, he reveals the identity of Injin Joe, and Wilsman promised to protect him from this vicious man. A loud knock at the door causes Huck to jump almost uh, out of his skin. So you can understand from the panic level of panic. In Huck's mind, that Huck was not feeling comfortable with this very character, Injun Joe, because he is a very vengeful person. So, <laughs> when he disclosed his identity, that the person is none other, none other than Injun Joe, um, and he was seeking some kind of confirmation not to reveal the name of Injun Joe or rather his own name, so that he might be in a secure position. So. There was a knock, and Huck was almost, you know, out of his skin. It is Douglas, uh, Widow Douglas, and a group of citizens who express their gratitude to Welshman. Mister Jones, in turn, tells tells the widow that there is another you are more beholden uh, to, but uh, he don't allow me to tell his name. Actually, he accepts that it is not only me. I get this information from someone else, and his name is not mentioned. So later on, at uh, the church morning, Mrs. Thatcher discovers that Bick is missing. Okay, now there's a twist uh, in the story. Where does Bicky goes? Bicky is missing. Aunt Polly discovers even Tom is missing. That means these two people they didn't return. The people realize that they are still in the cave, and it is their relation from their relation. They understand that they went to McDougal's cave, and uh, some of these two. Uh, two character Tom and uh, Becky they are already inside the cave so 200 men gathered and they immediately went for a search so this is the second time Tom is having a uh, you know <laughs> for Tom search party has been organized so first one was uh, for that island and uh, second one for this McDouglas cave this is the second time <clears throat> on Monday the men may return Huck is found sick with a high fever and um, the widow Douglas comes to care for him Huck was under, you know, treatment. Um, it was uh, the widow Douglas who was taking care of uh, of him. When Huck hears a discussion about the temperance tavern breaking, he jumps up from his fever and asks if anything had been found. He is told that only whiskey had been found. When he asks about Tom's wear, they say Tom's disappearance from him. Search for Tom and Becky continues for three days. And they find a hair ribbon and the children's name lettered on the wall, proof that they are still in the cave. Despair settles in, what when the men no longer have either hope or energy to keep looking for. So three characters are missing here. First is Tom is missing. Becky is along with him. And another another character is also missing. That is Joe, Injun Joe. So that is all in. Chapter number twenty nine to thirty. Let's move to thirty one to thirty two. So what we have? So in the cave, Tom and Becky was wandering here and there, and uh, they do not find any place to, you know, where from where they can get out of the cave. Tom uh, tried to discover and investigate new paths with Becky following him, but uh, the place is very confusing and it's a huge place. They didn't find any. Um, way out there are uh, stairs, waterfalls, springs, stalactites. I I told you earlier that limestones 
cave uh, normally have this stalactite is, stalactite is also formed due to limestone erosion and finally they run into some bats from which they flee definitely caves are you know some places where you may find a lot of wild animals there bat is very common there they were looking for way out but, but they could not first uh, tom and uh, becky then realize they are lost becky falls on the ground and she was crying tom trying to comfort her that it was all his fault they begin to wonder here and there tom takes becky's candle and blows it out to conserve the source of light after a while becky has to sit down she falls asleep she awakens tom stumble on something uh, stumble on until they find a spring so they find a water source there tom explains becky that they must stay close to water because their candles are almost gone now it is also uh, it is uh, tom is very smart because uh, because somehow the way he has been presented it has been clear to us that uh, without food you can stay some day but without water you won't be able to survive so he said um, in in a, in a very intelligent way that they should stay close to spring so tom shares a piece of cake they have they are actually using all the foods whatever they had becky realizes that the mother uh, may may think that they are actually harper's house and they won't be missed until some sunday so uh, she 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 was she was supposed to be in a different place but uh, it was tom's idea uh, they visited macdougall's cave so people will not even look after them that way they didn't they will not realize that these two characters are actually missing suddenly they uh, hear a voice in the background and the two began shouting but to no avail and the sounds fade away tom decided to explore becky was sitting by the spring um, at the end of the corridor he sees a human can holding a candle he shouts loudly and to his horror it's injun jo the shouting has also frightened injun jo so that means all these three characters who are actually missing from the town tom becky and injun jo both this trio was actually inside that cave and um, when tom found that it is injun jo he was afraid he was scared and injunjo is also afraid he thought that someone is after him so he was also scared both of them were scared of each other so tom um sometime tom is very hungry and becky is also weak so he was looking for another passage to explore becky feels that she will now she will now die tom promised to return her soon and hold her during her final moments acting bravely as he can he leaves her to find an exit yes obviously any rational man will do the same thing three days have passed and the villagers are in mourning for the loss of becky thomas this is the second time tom tom because of tom people were actually mourning so mrs thatcher is ill aunt polly is distraught then in the middle of the night a wild peal burst from the village bells and there were shouts turn out turn out they are found they are found a messenger goes to the cave to inform judge thatcher who is still searching using all types of exaggeration and embroidering the story as much possible tom tells of his becky and uh, becky's wonderful adventure he thoroughly enjoys the attention of the people children love to get the attention of the people isn't it so that is one very common three days and nights in the cave have drained the strength of both tom and becky tom gets better in three days but it takes a week for becky to regain her strength regain her strength meanwhile tom has heard of huck's illness he visits him Widow Douglas refused to allow Tom to tell about his awesome adventure in the cave because he she was afraid that uh, hearing this uh, adventure, Huck might be interested to visit Mac Douglas Cave. Might be. <laughs> Tom does hear that ragged man was found drowned in the river while trying to escape. That means two people, uh, Injun Jo and his partner. One of that partner, the name has been not mentioned over here, has been found dead. But Injun Jo is still inside the cave. Tom goes by uh, goes by to visit Becky just as he tells him that he has at the cave locked and secured so that no other children can get inside and Tom realized that oh, <laughs> that is something huge because he didn't tell other that Injinjo actually was inside the cave so the moment he heard about it to for the safety and security of the children it has been decided the uh gave k k will be locked and secured so no other children can get inside tom turned as white as it and explains that injun jo is in k so that will be all for today we have completed till chapter number 32 and 
in my next class next presentation i will complete till chapter 35 thank you for watching this video i hope you uh, will like this video please like share and subscribe my channel and help my channel to grow thank you goodbye